Remember this guy? <laughs> yes, it's Colin Furze, the British inventor and stuntman who previously wowed our experts with his homemade wall of death. But Colin hasn't been resting on his laurels. He has a newer and much louder obsession, jet engines. Okay, let's build a massive post jet. <laughs> yes, he's been building something even more dangerous, even more impressive, and even more insane. What's the most sensible thing to do now? Put on Mum's old bike! Behold, the jet bike. A 10-foot-long liquid propane-driven pulse jet engine on an old bicycle. <laughs> we tracked Colin down to find out what's behind his dangerous mix of jets and bicycles. In a way, they're kind of useless. They don't produce much thrust. They just get hot and make a lot of noise. But there's something about that which is just amazing. So we've built this chuffing great pulse jet, and I had this bike laying around, so why not put the two together? Why not, indeed? Colin was ready to ride, and two million of us tuned in to see him take his bike to the limit. I'm sure whoever designed that bicycle never imagined in wildest dreams that a pulse jet would be hooked up to it. That is, that is a cool noise. That is a noise that people will hear coming and they will turn and look to see what it is, and it's you. It's such a bizarre feeling that you've got this epic noise behind you and you can't hear anything, you can't speak to anybody. Just how scared do people look? If somebody looks like Becky, I turn it off. Colin hit over 50 miles per hour. So how does a simple pulse jet allow an old bike to reach ludicrous speed? He's built the, the simplest type of jet engine, which is called a pulse jet engine. It is literally a bent tube. There are no moving parts. So you have three basic components. You have your exhaust, which is the long, long portion, and then you have your combustion chamber, and then you have your intake. The fuel is introduced into the combustion chamber. That fuel seeps out through the exhaust and he lights it. When they first set the fuel on fire, you see a large orange flame come out the back. This is because there's not enough oxygen in the pipe for all of the fuel to burn. To fix this, Colin uses a leaf blower. The leaf blower is effectively the same as the turbine in a normal jet engine. He can force a lot of air, bringing a lot of oxygen, into the combustion chamber so that all the fuel burns completely and forces the bike forward. But no one's trailing with a leaf blower. What's going on? Whenever the fuel combusts, it expands rapidly. But after it's burnt all the fuel, it goes so far, it actually creates a low pressure in the combustion chamber. This means air from the air inlet is going to get sucked in, gas is going to be allowed in from his throttle control, and also air is going to be sucked back by the exhaust pipe. However, since the exhaust pipe is a bit longer, some of those hot combusted gases are still trapped in that pipe, so when they come back, they're still hot, they will fire the next one, and you just get this continuous rolling combustion, which gives the jet the thrust. These explosions are happening 250 times a second, and they're loud explosions. So it's loud, it's powerful, it's cool. 